close up with admire. Where we'll be unmasking issues closely to know more about God. Knowing more about business. Knowing more about talents. Knowing more about societies around and beyond. Asking uncommon questions. Sharing tips. Sharing joy. Sharing information. Admire Manyange, a public speaker, musician, and entrepreneur. Subscribe to AD Media SA YouTube channel so that you don't miss an episode. Close Up Talk Show is proudly brought to you by AD Media in association with the following companies appearing on your screen. Welcome, welcome guys to Close Up. And today we have an amazing guest in the house. We have Reverend T.T. Chiraviro, yes. He's with us right now, joining us all the way from the United States of America. Reverend, it's so good to have you here. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Ad Media, thank you so much. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, you know, uh, each time I just hear your name, you know, something inside of me just starts singing. <laughs> That song never gets old. It's like you know, like an old time kind of track, you know. I think I think yeah, even our certainly. kids are gonna sing that song. <laughs> certainly, certainly. Now now you can you can actually feel that um, it came from a bar, uh -huh. it came from God himself. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh -huh, uh -huh. It makes me wonder, I just wanted to maybe before I even get further into asking more questions. See, the song Ebenezer was just like the song of a moment, still is even up to now, the effect. And I just wanted to know what, what was like the biggest secret behind that? Because I mean, I look at the song, some of, most of the musicians that featured there, we know them. But, but there was just something with that song. What was like the biggest secret behind it? What made it so good like that in Zimbabwe? <laughs> Uh, it can only be God, brother. That's that's grace. Now, when God wants to send a uh, message to the people, uh -huh. He actually uh -huh. has His way of of doing it. There was nothing very special about it. I um I just received the song in a dream, and um, the album was already done. We were actually almost mastering it before that song, and then I received it in a dream. I was about to go to Zimbabwe. I just called the guys that I saw in the dream and said, oh, I, I got this song. Can you please uh, come and help me? Uh, it's actually on my 10th album and I'm actually celebrating my 10th album and the way God has taken us. Um, then I gave them the lines and then I went to Harare from Jobek and then, yeah, two days we were done. And then the producer uh, just decided to have it. Uh, on the on the list and the manager then came and said no in fact this should be the album title because the album title was anniversary it was not even as um, so yeah then as they say the rest is history the reception amazing where it went to what it took us to was amazing yeah you know i mean uh, i mean everybody who just heard the song could just put it on repeat <laughs> you know so i was just wondering so all in all how long did it take you to write the song and record it. No, that one, that one, <laughs> I received in a dream. I think it was on Wednesday, and then Thursday I was busy talking to people and then trying to reconstruct the song from the dream. Was I, all I remembered was the chorus and a few lines. Then I, I, I took the Thursday to put up the lines and then call the, the, the artist. Friday morning I was in Arad. And we were in studio Friday. I, I just from the airport straight to the studio, 
and we were recording the song. And actually, all of the artists got to see their words or their lines in the studio. Because all they did was just come in and wow. then let them sample, hear the chorus, and then please, these are the, the lines. If you want to change, if you want to do so, they, they all uh, came across the lines in studio. So that was only Friday and then we completed on a Saturday afternoon. And by Sunday morning, I was going back to do the with the song. Wow. So that, that was quick. That was really quick. I'm wondering, was that the way you used to handle your band? I understand I was going through your bio. Uh, you started a band called the Faith Ambassadors. I'm wondering, was that still the way uh, you were writing songs from beginning or that was something that came with experience? Um, I think now experience was coming in because uh, we, with the band, we, we used to really yes, uh, look at the words, go through them over and over and over again. And there's a result, um, then we go and we say, no, this is a final song, let's go to studio and record. So that was the okay. case uh, previously with the Faith Ambassadors. But then at that particular time, I was doing both ministry and music and mixing the two together. And then um, I, I got to a phase of the time where I did not even have a standing band because I had less time to do it. Um, to do music, I concentrated on the word, on the preaching of the word on the pulpit. So from then on, I started using session musicians. And I think out of experience then, um, now we are able to just get into studio, get an inspiration, get into studio, do a song, do lines there, correct them in the studio and fix everything in there. And because of technology as well, these days it's easier to do that. It's exactly what they say, experience is the best teacher, nothing beats experience. Uh, viewers don't go anywhere, we still have uh, Reverend T.T. Chivalver in the studio, so shortly after the break, stay with us. Close Up Talk Show is proudly brought to you by AD Media in association with the following companies appearing on your screen. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We still have Reverend T. T. Jumbavito straight from the United States of America. He is right here in the studio. Reverend, we're still happy and glad you're with us. Thank you so much. I'm enjoying the show. <laughs> Wonderful. Before we went on the break, you were telling us how you used to write music with the band um, and you were trying to juggle, you know, the faith ambassadors and you're trying to juggle between school and and, and being in music. Um, what was the experience like in terms of, um, you know, the hardships you used to face with the band and, you know, managing it and also schooling at the same time? How was that? Was that encouraging or discouraging? It was inspiring. Um, it was difficult at first because you're trying to balance two things uh, that, that require time. But um, as time went on, it also became apparent that God was also trying to say something through the music ministry to the people besides what we do in the pulpit as well. So as I was in college, um, we began to use uh, music and the rest of time as refreshing time, you know, when we are busy with the books and stuff, especially when I moved to the university of you know, then you just need time to just refresh, rewind, while others are doing their soccer and basketball and all this stuff, then I would be doing music. So it, it really came in um, at, at the right time during that particular time. The only challenge came after school, um, after college, when I had to then uh, take up ministry full time. So sometimes because of that, you would rarely find time to work with the band and, and then uh, uh, put everything together. That's when I shifted and then began to use uh, session artists. And also during that time, I just categorically specified the way we were going to 
I was going to do this music ministry. I was going to I made a, a decision that I was going to use it as a tool to preach the gospel. Uh, I would definitely never be a professional uh, gospel music artist because I already had a profession. So I just used it as pastime and uh, made use of session artists and it went wonders. I think up to now it has been working. Hmm. Tell me something in terms of the effects of uh, the music of all the albums you have released, right? Um, apart from the Ebenezer one, which everybody knows, which other album did you release that was more effective? Uh, well, I, I must say Ebenezer was the 10th one. Um, I had done nine before, but uh, uh, due to ministry uh, constraints and commitments and so forth, I, I was satisfied in getting, uh, in those days we, the music was being put on cassettes, not CDs like we have now, or MP3s or whatever. So I would be happy just to do a few cassettes that would um, be sold around the church, inside our, our, our ministry, our church, and um, take it around the country when the church has got gatherings and so forth. We just put the cassettes together and then you, you distribute to the people. I was happy with that. But, um, you know, so those albums were, were mainly hymn, hymnal albums, hymns from our Methodist church. Um, so they made an impact in the church, but not outside the church. But from Ebenezer, the tide changed because Ebenezer became more like a national possession. It, it became something that belonged to the people uh, nationally not just the church so from from Ebenezer I would discover that all the albums that came after like Manamepe no Periquets, Maranatha, Excellent um, you know all those albums that came Matisha Misa Jaire uh, and even the one that, that we have now Kanawakayambuka it, it looks like they all wrote on the fame that Ebenezer built for them. And um, each album that we've done after that has made some big impact even outside uh, the country as well. So, yeah, I think it, it can only be God. Okay, speaking of the albums getting out there, you first said that uh, the first albums were more effective inside your church. And then from Ebenezer, then it started to go out there. Um, what, 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 what really gave you the thought to do the collaborations? Uh, because I mean, I'm just thinking before uh, you said it was uh, it was effective inside. Well, was the whole idea of a collaboration to get the music to expand outside, or what was the initial intent? Well. Uh, Ebenezer was not the first mass collaboration that we did. I think um, the first song where I combined with more than two artists was Rekanaka. It was one from the album um, Goyakanaki Sisa. That was in 2010. So there was myself, Joe Maposa, Ndushi Kuje, Maichi Maviro, Takanda Mikas. And then I also had another one um, uh, which had Pastor Aisa, Bethan, Rasnaoko, and myself. And then I also had another one which had Kukumoyo, myself, and uh, the, uh, my sister Tsungi, uh, Tsungi Maburuzi. So the, those were three songs where I featured more than two artists, but they were all hymnals. Uh, they were basically hymnals, except for Mozi Sabunamata. So on Ebenezer, and then on on on, uh, on to God be the glory, which is an English hymnal again. I had South African artists like Zodwa, Bukle, um, Nontando, uh, myself, you know, on one song. Uh, okay. So, so let me say I had four songs that had more than three artists previously in the previous albums, but um. When I received the vision and the dream for Ebenezer, those artists that you see on Ebenezer were there in the dream. I saw them. And uh, I just followed it according to how I had received it. 
we were we were ministering on a on top of a mountain and there were millions of people i think i've told the story over and over again there were millions of people um, listening to us uh, in the valley just below the mountain and we were using the mountain as a stage and all those artists that that you see there plus others i think there were almost three or four others that we could not bring in uh because of other um, challenges but uh, probably there were about 10 to 15 artists that I saw in the dream. So I just followed it to the letter and um, yeah, you know, I think we've done, after Ebenezer, we also did Machamisa, which had more than six artists. We also did Maranatha, more than six artists, and now Kanawakayambuka as well. So yeah, you know, it, it is I'm actually trend. getting, I'm actually getting more excited. I'm, I'm, I'm getting so sorry to catch you. I'm so getting excited about the new album. I really can't wait to ask you about it. Kanawaka Yamboka. That one seems very, very powerful. So uh, all, uh, don't go away, guys. We still have a Reverend T.T. Chivavito. He's going to tell us all about the new album, which is trending right now. If you haven't checked it out, go to his page. Go to his YouTube channel, Reverend T.T. Chivavito, and see for yourself. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back to you after this break. Close Up Talk Show is proudly brought to you by AD Media in association with the following companies appearing on your screen. Welcome back everybody to the third and final episode of Close Up with Reverend T.T. Chumabro straight from the United States. Reverend, it's still good to have you here. Um, I'm, the, the program is getting exciting. I'm getting excited and inspired too. Thank you so much, Adi. <laughs> ah, wonderful. Before we went on a break, you were telling us about the new album, Kanawaka Yamuka. Wow. Ah, you were telling us again before we spoke about the new album about the vision of Ebenezer that uh, you got a vision. I'm so keen to know that. Is this how all of the songs, including the new album, is that how you write them? Do you get like a special vision and then you write it? Or how do you write it? How, how did the new album came about? Uh, well, like I said, the previous albums were mainly hymns um, uh, until we, we got towards Ebenezer where I started to... Well, my, when I sat down with my manager, he actually encouraged me because he knew me as a preacher as well. So he encouraged me to turn um, my manager, Mr. Alan Zogoizi, he encouraged me to turn uh, those sermons into songs. So from the album Ebenezer, all the original compositions that I have mainly are coming from uh, sermons that I have preached. You know, all those things. You, you, all those songs you... I actually took uh, time when I preach a sermon and then I see that this sermon has made an impact on many people I turn it into a song so I have more than a hundred original songs that I have not even touched so and um, uh, each time I do such a sermon I turn it into a song and then I store it turn it into a song and then I store it so I just uh, hope that probably even when I'm gone my children and children's children can still go back to those songs and release them because I believe it is the word of God to the people. Um, they would definitely go back because it's yes. quite <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, go on. Surprisingly, go on. yeah, surprisingly, you know, uh -huh. um, I only have, I think, about four songs that emerged out of dreams. I've recorded more than 90 now. I've or released more than 90 now. Um, but of those songs, uh, all of them are in, in 18. But um, Kanawaka Yamboka is our 18th album. But all of, in all of those albums, I only have, um, I think, four songs that I've received through Dreams, and that is Ebenezer itself, and um, Nyarare, Amperewe, and this one, uh, Kanawaka Yamboka. Kanawaka Yamboka. I think for those who follow me, they know on Facebook, early November last year, 
after I had the dream, I actually woke up at, at night and then I, I I posted on Facebook, on my Facebook group, yeah, yeah. that I've, I've dreamt of a song called Kanawaka Yambuka, which I was singing. But in, in, at this time, I did not get, um, I did not uh, get to see the artist that I was singing. So I took it to the people and I asked their fans, do you want me to record it as a, a solo artist or should I bring other people on board? Because I just remembered the song. I captured it on my phone after the dream and then I took it to the people. And those who remember, they know very well when, when I got it. And then from there, I began to develop it. But the sound that I had was more of that Bendera sound in the, in the original song. So I... I had to wow. take the guards and try and find out one of the uh, Dendera uh, uh, music singers. And uh, fortunately, or oh, by the grace of God, I got uh, the father, the, the remaining father of Dendera music, Mawala and Chibetu. And then I asked him to help me shape the song. And then I, I looked at other artists, because if you look at my collaborations that I've done, um, I usually don't repeat the artists that I collaborated with previously. I just bring in new people. So I looked at um, other artists who are I hope I'm going to be on the next list. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I, I I looked at them and then I said, no, um, can you come and help me? And then I got the artists and then they all agreed. Because now I think it's easier for me to convince the artists to join it because they know um, my purpose is, is not about any uh, competitive aspect, but um, it's something to do with getting the message out there because if I if I feature admire if I feature blessing shoot if I feature a doka smoy their followers will also get a chance to listen to that product and so the product gets it reaches far and wide and the message that God would have given you gets to more people and that is the whole purpose of collaborating just to get the message because we, we sing gospel gospel is an honor and that honor is Jesus Christ and the whole purpose of gospel is to tell me the good news to everybody. Sorry, tell me more about the new album just before we uh, finish up. Um, I'm, I'm so interested and so keen. I've seen you released Ano Pindu Ramina Mato, uh, meaning, you know, Jesus answers or God answers prayers. Uh, how was the response on the, on, on the new uh, release? No, um, the response is quite exciting. Uh, in fact, for the whole album, now we have done three videos, and Ano Pindua, um, by grace, was also we were also helped by Art Media. We thank you, we appreciate you uh, for that particular song. We 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 have done three videos now. Ano Pindura, the order that alters, which alter that alters, which will be releasing next weekend. So almost like every two two weeks, we will be releasing a new video. Um, there are six songs there, so there are still three new videos to look out for. Um, the reception has been fantastic. I think you can see even on the radio charts, TV charts, uh, it's, it's all about that album. And um, it's, it's quite surprising because we are, we are so far away from home, but the response from home is quite exciting and we, we are really excited. And I think it is the grace of God. Mm, wonderful. So just before you go, Reverend, uh, you are a man of God, you are a father, you are a, a, a music minister as well, and I'm sure there's several other responsibilities on your shoulders. Um, uh, you know, can you just basically advise, uh, you know, other men out there, how you are managing all of that and still being able to be effective in all those different areas. In conclusion, what, what can you say? Maybe less than a minute before we go. Yeah, we uh, we are also running a, a ministry with about uh, 15 assemblies or churches and we've got about 21 pastors under us. We've got this music ministry that's happening. I also write books. I've got that about five books now. Um, a father, I have two kids, a wife. So to juggle all that, you just need the grace of God to get it right, to, to get the right balance. It's, it's very difficult. I can't say it's very easy. It's difficult, but you need the grace of God to also help you so that you strike a good balance in all the areas. But by grace, if you just find what God has purposed you to do and follow that mission and that path, you don't get it wrong. 
just do what God has allowed you to do and that which you can't do or which you fail to do, leave it for others to do. That's what we, that's how we are operating at the moment. Wonderful. Wise words from you. Thank you so much for, have, for joining us today in the studio. We really appreciate it, Reverend. Thank you so much. I also appreciate you having me. May God bless you. Uh, viewers, thank you for joining us today. In today's episode, you heard what the Reverend said. Do what you have been called to do. Whatever you can't do, bring it to God. Thank you so much. Uh, till we meet again next time, be safe, stay safe. Ama